John Atkin, uh, old friend. Uh, uh, John's been involved in heritage preservation stuff, historical research going back into the 80s. Uh, author of five books, the most recent one, Changing City, he's done with Andy Copeland. And uh, John's written the 2009 Chinatown Lighting Strategy with Jeanette Hlavach. And uh, I mean, his ongoing projects, we could, I could spend five minutes up here, but um, Neon Historian, uh, the Chinatown Tunnels in North America, there's just such a range, a very odd, quirky mind. John Atkin. <laughs> that about describes it. Um, Anyway, I, uh, when I got the invitation for this, I was really struggling with what the heck was I going to do? And I thought I could do large projects, I could talk about my house, I could talk about the Chinese gambling den that was in the basement, etc. And I thought I would focus in on something really tiny, just for fun. And so tonight, we're gonna look at the side of one building on East Hastings, and that's where you see the James Stark, Edward Stark, sorry, uh, going out of business sign, it's a shoe and boot store, uh, in, on Hastings Street. Uh, the building had been open for two years. He decided the shoe store wasn't working, so he's decided to move. And so he pasted a paper sign up on the wall to tell everyone, I'm going out of business. The blank wall is now there. The building, the eastern block, is now the Strathcona Hotel. So what they did was they took the name from the west side of the city, which was very popular, and moved it to the east side. And so they felt the Strathcona name had cachet. The wall is blank. It's used for circus posters every now and then. Uh, Woodward's has just added two floors to its original building. And we see that the Holden block at the bottom of the street near Carroll Street is now finished. And then the hotel decides we better paint something. And so they paint just that simple Hotel Strathcona sign on the wall. Why they're doing this, and you'll note all sorts of signs now appearing very, very high up. You might see it from the street, but the city's growing taller. People are figuring it out. The people are standing in an office window are going to look at their building. So advertising starts showing up very, very high up on the buildings. And then Pierre Paris. He decides after Robson Street didn't really work, Main Street didn't really work, he's going to move into where Mr. Stark was. He opens up something called the World Shoe Company. That stuck around for a couple of years and then finally decided he's going to be P. Paris. And so he gets a sign out front and they paint the first of the signs on the wall of the building. So he has actually a fellow there um, fitting a natty gentleman with shoes and the idea is that shoes to measure. And so the sign uh, stays, it changes a, a little bit, but what also happens is the neighborhood around is now growing. We're starting to see in the 19 teens into the 1920s a real movement in this area. Transportation, we've got the steamships at the foot of, uh... that's fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's you. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> All right. Hands off. <laughs> okay. So what we have then is transportation systems. We've got the BC Electric Terminus at Carroll Street. We've got the Union Steamships at the foot of uh, Columbia Street. We've got train stations in Chinatown, etc. And so we've got this huge... Uh, group of people running around, and this place is really, really busy. And so uh, what's interesting is the Pierre Paris, Pierre Paris sign then continues to change as the business grows and things change. And I wanted to put this one in. The sign is roughly the same here. We're just two years difference, but note the policeman standing there. He's in an old style police uniform, and he's standing there with the first traffic control for intersections. Spin the sign, you can go, you can stop. This photograph was taken just two years after we switched sides for driving, so 1922, we moved to the other side of the road. Now, here is Constable Duncan McTavish. He has the newfangled one, it spins, and it has a lantern on top for safety. <laughs> and you can also see that the Pierre Paris sign, it's now the home of Pierre Paris. And of course, our image, which is blurry on this one, and shows up in the next one, is the man, the very nattily dressed man getting no shoes, is now a woman. And she's in a sitting room with wallpaper. The same fellow is still there putting the shoe on, but the guy has been painted out. And this also matches when the sign companies change. And there are three different sign companies that have painted uh, the wall of this building. And there's the newfangled traffic light. So 1928 is when the first traffic light gets hung uh, on the streets of Vancouver. 
And so then uh, the Pierre Paris company evolves, and what they do is they become much more interested in shoes in the orthopedic sense. And so they get rid of all the nice people and everything else, and they just put that very strange foot. It looks like a Japanese cat, <laughs> but it's actually the sore points on your foot, lightning bolts and everything else. And so uh, this sign is interesting, though, because there's one missing in the sequence. And so the company has actually painted out a, a previous sign, and you can see all those marks there. So that's the graphic quality, which I quite like. And in this one from the 1940s, what we're seeing now is reinvestment in the neighborhood. Uh, that post-war depression has finished, uh, stores are being improved, and uh, so we're seeing a lot of investment. And that was the last sign ever painted on the side of the building. So here it is in 2006. 213, when you get up close, it's faded to the point where you can see every single sign that was ever painted on the building. And when you get really close, you can't lose with Pierre Paris, and it's a piece of abstract art. Thank you. Yeah.